Hey, it's Michael from Arc Smarter. We're going to take a few minutes to tell you about PowerPack, Arc Smarter's new app for Revit. PowerPack is a productivity add in that contains seven of the most popular Revit macros that I developed for the Arc Smarter toolbox. These tools have been downloaded by thousands of Arc Smarter readers and are going to save you a ton of time. Now, instead of having to load each individual macro file, you can access these time saving tools directly from the Revit add ins ribbon. In this video, I'm going to walk you through each of the tools and show you how they work. So here I am in Revit 2017, and I'm going to open a sample file. So I go into the add-ins ribbon, and the power pack tools are right here in the Arc Smarter section. Now the first tool of power pack is batch insert. Batch insert is great when you have lots of files that you need to insert into Revit. You can insert either DWG or RVT files. The DWG mode is really useful when you need to import or link a lot of details, for example. I first select the DWG files that I want to import. I'm going to select these files here. I hit open. And then I specify the insert type. So I can choose either to import or link. I'm going to link. Then I specify the positioning. So I have center to center or origin to origin. So these are details. I'm going to choose center to center. And lastly, I pick my color settings. So I can preserve the original AutoCAD colors. I can invert them, or I can choose black and white. So I'm going to choose preserve, and then I just click OK. So the tool is going to go through, and it's going to link each DWG file into its own drafting view. And as you'll see in a second, each drafting view is going to be named per the AutoCAD file that's being inserted. So it tells me that it created seven drafting views. And I'm just going to go over in the project browser. And I can see right here in the drafting views, here are the ones that I linked. So if I double click on that, here is my linked view. And same thing here. So real nice and easy. Oh, I can also link RBT files. If I click on this, all I do is simply select the RBT files that I want to link. And the tool will go through and link them for me automatically. So I don't have to do it individually. Again, nice and easy. Now the next tool is batch rename. And you can use this tool to easily rename room names and numbers, sheet names and numbers, and view names. So if your client suddenly wants to change the name of all your classrooms to something like teaching laboratories, you can easily accomplish this with a few clicks. So let me show you how. And I'm gonna to go to the third floor and I zoom in and I have some rooms here that are named instruction. So let me open up batch rename and I'm going to change instruction and let's call it teaching lab instead. And then I specify that I want to actually change the room name. And I can also specify if I want to just match the case. Uh, so if it's uppercase, it will only match to uppercase and same with lowercase and also match whole word word only, meaning that if I have instruction, it will look for instruction entirely. Uh, it won't look for a portion of that. So I'm going to keep those unchecked and then I just click OK. And you can see it's telling me that it went through and it updated 19 room names. I click close. You see right here it's actually updated these rooms. Now this works also with sheets. So let me scroll down and say, for example, I need to change the prefix of my sheet. Right now I have two sheets that have a1 and A2. I go to batch rename. Let's say I want to change those from A to AA. And I click OK. You can see it tells me it updated to the sheet numbers. And then now my sheet numbers have the AA prefix. Now the next tool is a personal favorite of mine. This is Power Convert. And this tool converts line work in linked or imported DWG files to native Revit lines. Now, you might be asking why you'd use this tool instead of just exploding a DWG file. Now, one thing to note is that exploding a DWG file converts all the AutoCAD layers and styles to their own Revit styles. So if you have a large DWG file, you're going to flood your Revit model with a lot of junk. This impacts the performance of your file and can lead to corruption issues down the road. So it's much better practice to convert the DWG file to native Revit styles and this keeps your file size down and limits the number of styles that you need to manage. So using Power Convert, I actually have two options here, Power Convert and Quick Convert. Power Convert 
you first specify the line type that you want to convert. So you can do detail lines, model lines. You can also convert to area boundaries, room separation boundaries, and space separation boundaries. Then you select the actual DVG file that you want to convert. And let me go into one of our details that we inserted earlier. So here is my linked DVG file. I go back to Power Convert. I'm going to convert this linked file to detail lines. So I click to select it here. And you'll see that it actually reads all of the layers in that DWG file. I'm going to go through and I'm going to specify the line styles for each AutoCAD layer. If I want to, I can save these settings to a text file. This is really useful if I'm going to be converting a lot of details that are going to have similar layer settings. Okay, so now that that's done, I can just click on OK. And the tool's going to go through and it's basically going to recreate my detail using actual native Revit lines. So you can, it tells me it created 417 detail lines. And now if I go in here, you can see that these are actually Revit lines. And if I wanted to clean this up, I can delete the original link file. And now I have my Revit styles. If I wanted to just convert that detail to a single line style, I can just use the quick convert. And here, pretty much the same process. I specify the line type. I specify the DWG that I want to convert. And then I specify the line style I want to convert it to. So if you're doing something like area boundaries or room separation lines, this is a good tool because it will bring everything in to that particular line type. Now, next up is the replace font tool. Let's switch this over to a floor plan view. And replace font does exactly what it says. It replaces one font in the current Revit model with another font. So it reads all of the fonts that are in the file. Right now in this file, there's just Arial. And then I can specify a new font. So I'm going to choose to change this to, let's go to Century Gothic. And the new fonts, it reads all of the fonts that are loaded on the current computer. Then I can specify the scope. So I may want to just change text notes or if I want to do labels or dimensions. I can also choose to replace the font in loaded families as well. So I'm going to choose this option. And it may take a moment or two to actually load all of those families into memory. Now, when the tool is complete, it's going to tell me how many text, dimension, and label styles that it updated. And you can see from here, there's quite a lot in this file. So hit close. And now we can see that we have a new font in here with all of our text styles. Make Sheets and Make Views lets me quickly create new sheets and views in my current Revit model. Using Make Sheets, I can create a bunch of new sheets from the data in a CSV file or Excel file. Open up Make Sheets, and I first can browse to select a CSV file. And I have one on my desktop that I'm going to use. And I click Open, and then I choose the title block that I want to use for these new sheets. And then I specify the type. If I'm going to use a regular sheet, create a regular sheet or a placeholder sheet. And then I click OK. And the tool goes through and it creates my new sheets. Now, if I don't have a spreadsheet already created, I can create this plus button to create a default CSV file. And this will automatically open up Excel and it will pre-populate the file in the correct format. And so here it is, here's the, the template. You can see that there's a column for sheet number, column for sheet name, and then a third column with any views that I want to add to those sheets. So I would make my changes here. I'm going to go File, Save As. I'm going to save this in the CSV format because that's what the tool reads. And that's it. Then I can use that as a template cloud to create my new sheets. Now, if I want to create some new views, I can use the view make, make views tool. Now, using this tool, I can create new floor plans, reflected ceiling plans, or structural plans from selected levels in the current model. One of the big benefits to this tool is that you can specify the view template, scope box, and design option for the new views. And this will save you a lot of time if you need to create them. So I just specify the view type first. So let's say I wanted to create some structural plans. I select the levels, and this is going to read all of the levels in the current file. 
then I can apply a view template to it. If there are any scope boxes, I can choose them here. And same thing goes with the sign option. And then I just click OK. So the tool goes through and it creates those new views. And then I can access them right here. And you'll see that they have the view template applied to them already. The Copy Views tool lets you create batch copy of views in the current Revit model. So all I have to do is select the views that I want to duplicate. For example, if I want to copy this 3D view, I can specify the number of copies and then some of the settings. So if I want to duplicate with detailing or duplicate as a dependent, and then I click OK, and it's going to go through and it create those copies for me. Now, the last tool is a personal favorite of mine, it's Align Views. And this tool came out of my frustration with trying to align views across multiple sheets. Before I had the tool, I would always have to eyeball it, or I'd have to copy and paste a reference line into each sheet and then align the view manually to my reference line. Now, using the tool, you can just select the master view. So if I want to align everything to the plan view, uh, a one entry level, then I select the views that I want to align to that. And I can also choose the alignment point. So I can do center, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And then I can also choose to pin the views as well as it aligns them. And I just click OK. The tool goes through and it's going to align those views consistently. And I love this tool. And if you're a particular like me, this tool makes it real easy to get your views consistent from sheet to sheet. So that's the summary of the tools in the Power Pack. You know, you're going to save a lot of time with these tools. And like I said at the beginning, these tools have been downloaded by thousands of ARC Smarter readers. So they've been tested in real life situations. Thanks and have a great day.